Hi everyone, my name is Taras and you are watching Meteor podcast from GS Solutions. Uh, today we are going to talk about RapiSync. Uh, RapiSync enables you to write some asynchronous interaction in a synchronous fashion. Uh, what does it mean? You will know in this podcast if you maybe don't understand some uh, terminology. So uh, let's start. Uh, we are starting from a very simple and straightforward example. Uh, as you see in my editor, uh, we have a simple web page uh, which uh, contains uh, our tem template and uh, also we have a small script. Uh, this is starting point, point for, uh, for our example and uh, uh, right now I will uh, explain uh, what does this application. Uh, so. Uh, here we have a small input and a button. Let's test it. It is pretty simple, yeah? Uh, so uh, we just uh, type some name and uh, got uh, some greeting. Uh, okay, what we have? Uh, here is server side code section and client side code section. Um, on server side we have right now only one simple method. Uh, this method uh, just returns uh, for us some greeting phrase uh, by uh, some username which we uh, got as parameter. Uh, on client side uh, we have only uh, one simple event listener and uh, uh, this listener enables us to um, call uh, server side method and uh, got some greeting response uh, and we initialize it right here. It is simple and uh, let's imagine that we need to use some external service which has some public API. So uh, we are not using any real API, we just write our own uh, example of service. Okay, uh, right now our code became more complicated and what exactly I added? Uh, first of all, we have uh, on the boss section, uh, our Mongo collection. Uh, it's called uh, Greetings Journal, and uh, we will uh, uh, save our greetings in this collection uh, in order to user uh, could uh, review all greetings. Um, also, we added on server side some uh, mock my external echo service this object uh, simulates uh, server uh, site interaction with uh, some external api and um, it has only one method but uh, this method will uh, got some username and uh, on result callback uh, which uh, give us our greeting message as a result. But uh, in order to simulate uh, server-side uh, uh, interactions with other uh, external service, we need to use uh, set timeout because, uh, as you know, uh, interaction between uh, two clients uh, or better say server and client uh, always uh, goes with some delays so right now we have delay one second this sync uh, enables us to simulate uh, interaction with uh, some service and uh, as you see we uh, we calling our callback uh, in timeout function callback uh, and uh, it receives our greeting message. So we move this code from our 
method to this service. Uh, also, we modify our method. Uh, right now, it uh, uses uh, ser service we write, and uh, uh, we pass our callback function to uh, to the service and uh, receive uh, our result. Uh, after that, we check errors and uh, save our result into a collection. On client side, we just uh, we just show our greetings message. Uh, it is uh, pretty simple. Uh, we are using uh, each block and uh, uh, show our messages in it. Okay, um, I think that's all. Uh, let's let's check up our application now. Um, have some error, and what exactly error we have? Uh, as you see. Uh, it says meet your code must, must always run within a fiber and uh, it recommends us to use uh, meet your bind environment why does it happen because when we use set timeout or when we use some real HTTP uh, interaction we uh, we have some callback which uh, running outside of Meteor's fiber. Uh, Meteor fiber enable us to write uh, asynchronous code in synchronous fashion. And uh, right now, when uh, we use set timeout, we just uh, uh, call this function outside of uh, of Meteor's fiber. And uh, because Meteor Fiber uh, don't know about our callback, uh, it throws uh, th that uh, exception. But actually, we can uh, prevent it by commenting uh, this code. Let's check it out. Yeah, as you see, we don't have exception, but our code doesn't work because uh, right now we don't saving uh, our greeting message. So, um, main reason of that is because uh, when we're running in fiber, uh, our collections uh, know about uh, database connection uh, from uh, environment variables which are attached to our fibers and we when we are running uh, our um, collection calls outside of fiber it doesn't know about environment and as a result uh, we got uh, such exceptions so uh, let's use this tip and uh, try to use bind environment for that i just uh, check out my next tag. Um, okay, let's look at this code now. Uh, I didn't change anything except uh, this line. Uh, right now uh, we are using bind environment. Bind environment enables us to uh, attach our environment variables uh, which uh, can describe also our da database uh, credentials and etc and uh, this function uh, receives uh, our callback and uh, wraps it in another callback which uh, attaches uh, required information um, okay let's test it I will clear our logs.
and yes it does work uh, so uh, in addition right now we have uh, some um, service we just simulating it but uh, in real life it can be uh, some real service uh, usually popular services uh, have all, already have some smart packages for it and uh, uh, they are wrapped in such in such uh, callbacks but uh, using this uh, function or some other techniques but uh, sometimes you need to use some not so popular service that can be just wrapped into um, into smart package as npm package or uh, maybe even it doesn't have any npm packages so uh, if you have such packages or you uh, are going to write your own uh, package then uh, usually you need uh, to use uh, this function that called bind environment uh, also, I will show uh, a bit different technique, uh, which uh, uh, will enable us to write uh, any asyn asynchronous code uh, in uh, synchronous fashion. Uh, and uh, this technique is very simple. We just use uh, uh, meteor.wrap-async function. Okay, uh, let's go to another point in our repository. We rewrite our code a bit, but uh, in general it looks like uh, previous point. Uh, but our server-side method uh, was changed a bit, and uh, what exactly we change? Uh, first of all, we saving uh, our services method uh, into variable it's called service function uh, then we are using uh, meteor wrap async uh, with this function and uh, meteor wrap async returns uh, for us another function uh, which can be called uh, in synchronous manner if we can call it then we just calling and uh, then uh, we are getting uh, result uh, as usual as a result of usual function uh, there is no callbacks uh, anyway um, after that uh, we just saving uh, our um, greeting message uh, into the database that is the same as uh, as in previous example but as you see there is no callbacks anymore and uh, at the end we can even return our greeting message uh, to the client code and uh, use it immediately in, uh, in our callback on client side let's test it also and uh, we can say that please uh, show our result uh, in message box on client side so uh, let's test it okay yeah we got it uh, as you see, we rewrite our code uh, which previously used callbacks uh, in some uh, synchronous fashion and uh, this magic happens only because of fibers uh, and right now we can uh, even uh, check our wrapper sync and uh, look into sources how it works. So let's go into it and check. We can simply look in it. 
Uh, as you see, uh, our wrapper sync function uh, re receives as parameters two arguments. First is our function. Uh, it is function which uh, should uh, trigger our uh, interaction with some uh, external service. So it is uh, usually using uh, HTTP protocol and make some queries uh, to another server and uh, receive some data in, in callback. But uh, this thing uh, enables us uh, uh, this thing uh, makes callback redundant so uh, we just pass function also we can pass context if our function use some context uh, of uh, its uh, object where it is located uh, and as a result uh, there is uh, another function uh, this function will, will be called uh, in our code uh, let's take a look at it uh, here it is. Uh, this is function that uh, will be returned. Uh, it is here. And this function uh, receives some arguments. Uh, as you see, our uh, service uh, function uh, receives one argument. Uh, it is username. Uh, so um, this function uh, contains uh, generally three uh, section of code. Uh, first section just uh, looks for callback. Uh, so as you understand, we can not only use uh, synchronous fashion, we also can pass callback into this function and uh, it will just bind environment uh, to our callback and uh, we'll call it when uh, it will got some result. Uh, but if uh, this code uh, didn't find uh, our callback, uh, then it is uh, it using uh, future. Future is uh, object from uh, uh, Fibers package, and this object uh, provides uh, functionality similar to uh, promises. But this functionality enables us to. Uh, stop uh, code executing until we got some result from remote server. Um, as you see, we bind environment to our callback and uh, just call our function that we receive uh, as first argument. Uh, and uh, here we uh, have some magic because uh, this call will uh, pause our code executing and uh, uh, our result will be returned only at that point of time uh, when we got some result from remote server. Uh, examples for for this screencast will be uh, share it on GitHub and uh, uh, link to the GitHub repository will be uh, posted in description below this video. As you see, it's called uh, wrap async example and uh, it contains all store text, so you can go through this and uh, just uh, replace it all in your head and uh, try to understand what exactly going on. <coughs> That's all. Um, so keep your code in fibers and bye.